Hey guys, so we are back from Utah and as we were home and we were thinking about it, we decided the best video to do would be to tell you a little bit about our trip and uh, some tips so that you don't have the experience that we had. We had a good bit of issues um, that we ran into along the way. So this tip video is literally just going to be giving you tips of how to have a great, 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 great time. So the reason we're making this tip video is because we watched so many videos about hiking in Zion before we left. We're not just producers, we're also consumers. Uh, and none of the videos, none of the blogs I read, nothing gave us any of this information. So we're bringing you great information that I literally couldn't find anywhere else until we got to Zion and just made a bunch of mistakes. So this video is a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow and hopefully it's everything you need and more to have a great time. So tip number one is to buy an annual pass for the national parks. It's called America the Beautiful, it's $80. Literally every state has national parks. Utah has five. So you go there, you knock them all out, you have a great time and you save so much money. That pass paid for itself so quickly. And that's actually one of the things that we did right. So if you do anything that we did, please buy that pass. It's gonna help you in the long run. And I'm gonna link it below for you. Tip number two is about the shuttle pass. We didn't realize that Zion had a shuttle whenever we were signing up and planning our trip and all that kind of stuff. Literally, you have to have the shuttle to get to 90% of the hikes. You can get to pull-offs and you can get to overlook trail without the shuttle. However, to get to all the other hikes like Angel's Landing, um, the Emerald Pools, the Narrows, you have to have the shuttle pass. You, to get the shuttle pass, you go to recreation.gov and you type in Zion Shuttle Pass or Zion Shuttle Bus. It pops up. You have to do it at five o'clock the day before. No earlier, no later, because it sells out in literally 30 seconds. The Zion Shuttle Pass with the park is only a dollar, but we saw the lines for that pass and they were astronomical. They were so long and those people waited hours just to get on a shuttle bus to go back to the main area. You pay for what you get. There are private shuttles that you can book at many different places. The place that we chose was Zion Outfitters. Literally the very first thing right outside of the park. There's a bridge where you can park inside at the visitor center and then walk across the bridge and you end up right at Zion Outfitters ready to go on your shuttle and your car is already parked for free. So that is my tip for you. Spend the $40, spend the money, get the shuttle. The reason I say that is because with the uh, regular just Zion Park Shuttle Pass, you, you pay $1 and you can get on it and you can go all around, but as soon as you make it back to that visitor center, your ticket is obsolete, it's over, you're done. So you never want to get out of the park or go outside for lunch or do anything like that when you have that pass. You're very limited in what you're able to do. What we were able to do with our private pass is we were able to get on as many shuttles as we wanted that day. So we got on the pass bright and early first thing in the morning. We went all the way to the Angels Landing hike, came all the way back on the shuttle, walked, got lunch. Then we got on another shuttle after we got prepped for the Narrows hike, went on another shuttle, came all the way back. We could have done many, many more. We only did the four shuttles. But the point is that you have so many more options with their shuttle than you do with the dollar. And obviously it's more. And if you're budget constrained and you're like, I gotta have that dollar pass, go for it. I believe in you. Get on there at five o'clock. You make that happen. But if not, and uh, you're not quick to the draw, the Zion Shuttle Pass or the Zion Outfitters Shuttle Pass is the way to go. To get the Zion Outfitters Shuttle Pass, you go park in their parking lot. You walk up to this little pavilion thing. Uh, there's usually two people working at this little desk. They got benches out there and everything. You just walk up Tell them what you want, tell them what you need. They have time slots that you can sign up for, everything. It was so easy, so painless. They gave us a map of the park. They helped us plan the rest of our trip there. Like most amazing people we met our entire trip. They were amazing. There are three ways that you can get into those uh, special hikes. The ones that are down that one road that only allow shuttles, they only allow bikes, and they allow you to walk it. Let me tell you something. 
You do not want to walk that and then have to do that hike unless you are super fit and super ready and super game for that. I do not recommend that. I don't, I know we couldn't have handled that, especially because we did the two artist hikes in one day. The next option is an electric bike or a regular bike. The electric bike runs $95 for an entire day. The regular bike runs about 40 to 30, depending on what time you rent it. I think that the bikes are doable, especially if your fitness level is up there and you don't plan on you know, doing anything too strenuous. You can actually ride the bike on some of the hikes as well. It uh, tells you a little bit about that whenever you sign up for them. If you are driving to Zion National Park, and you want to bring your bikes or bring your family's bikes, that's another option that could save you some serious change. That would help you tremendously. And all you got to do is park at the visitor center, get on your bike and go. So let's talk about the visitor center a little bit. This is tip number three. The only free parking, let me repeat that. The only free parking in the entire area is at the Zion National Park Visitor Center. And you have to get there before 7, 7.30 to get that parking spot. We got there at like 5.50 in the morning and it was halfway full. You wanna get there as soon as you can. Even if you get there, roll down the windows and take a little nap. Just get there, just get there, park your car, park for free. Because otherwise you have to park outside of the park. And then that's another way that you have to get into the park. Um, and you have to walk a little bit further. You gotta pay more. It's like $25 a day at least to park in Springdale, which is the town right outside of Zion National Park. So do your due diligence, wake your family up, wake yourself up, get there bright and early and get that parking spot. You will be thankful later. Tip number four, where should you stay in Zion? Let me tell you, you can actually camp inside the park. I do not know how to do this. I'm pretty sure you can look it up on their website. We saw people doing it. There's a whole camping area and they looked like happy campers. I <laughs> know that's corny, but they really did. They looked like they were having a great time. They had tents, they had camper vans, they had regular vans that are like turned into camper vans. All types of people were there. And I really regret not doing that. I think that looks super cool, super fun. There's also the town right outside of Zion that I just mentioned, Springdale. And they have hotels, they have resorts, they have campsites, they have all kinds of things. Now, Springdale is a little bit more expensive from what we saw online and when we looked around. If that is your budget, if that is your price range, go for it. It was gorgeous in that town. Everything was beautiful, so picturesque, so cute. Uh, everything was walkable, so you wouldn't need to drive around once you got there. Another option right outside of Springdale is Virgin. Uh, Virgin didn't really have anything, just a lot of mountains. Um, but you could camp there. They had tent sites. Uh, they had little pull-offs where you could camp in your van right outside. Uh, that was also a very easy area to get into Zion National Park. The last option for accommodations is Hurricane, which is a town right outside of Virgin. I know I keep like bringing it a little further out every time. Hurricane is probably your cheapest option if you're not camping. Uh, our hotel room, whenever we stayed there, uh, was fairly cheap. It wasn't very expensive compared to like the $300 a night Springdale. I think it was like 120, which is much better for us. Uh, we don't like to spend a lot on accommodations because we're rarely there. We're usually out and about and doing, and we're sleeping there. Hurricane is only 30 minutes away from Zion National Park, uh, which in our book is very worth it. Uh, we just got up a little bit earlier, drove a little bit further, but it was it was very worth it. When we first arrived in Zion, we stayed on a tent at in a tent at the top of a mountain, and that was also a 30-minute drive to Zion, even though it was technically in Virgin and it was closer. The road was just really sketchy and kind of dangerous, and we weren't in that kind of vehicle, so keep that in mind. Tip number five about your experience in Zion. Do you want to hike these jaw-dropping views, all this beautiful scenery? Are you ready for this? Let me tell you, you are. Because what we learned whenever we got there is that they have different levels of hikes and all of them are equally beautiful. Some are paved, some are super easy, some are really intense. <laughs> we did the two hardest hikes on the same day. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about those. Angel's Landing is the first hike we did. And one we learned whenever we got there is that it's best to do that in the morning. That's why we got to the shuttle at 6 a.m. That's why we were to the mountain at 6.20 because that hike gets so packed. Um, it is the hardest hike in Zion National Park. 
you go all the way up to Scouts Landing, and that is a paved hike the entire way, all the way up to Scouts Landing. I saw a pregnant lady doing this hike. So that's not what makes this the hardest hike. Uh, whenever you get to Scouts Landing, there is this very narrow path that is straight up, and there is a chain in the middle. They call it the chains whenever you get to that area. And you are walking on one side, and the, the thing that you want to avoid there is that you want to avoid someone walking on this side while you're walking on this side. Because what happens is there is a 1,500 foot drop on this side and about a 3,000 foot drop on this side, right? Very dangerous, very, very small walkway. Um, you need to be very, very careful. They've had 13 deaths as of the sign that we read whenever we were there. Whenever you're going over this, you're holding on to the chains, right? But if someone comes to pass you, one of you has to let go of the chain to let the other one pass. So you see how this could get a little um, risky, a little dangerous, especially if you're not super confident with hiking, which is why I did not do it. I did not feel confident in my ability to survive that. I didn't want to be number 14. However, there were tons of people going and doing it and having a great time. So if you are capable and you feel comfortable, I say go for it and let me know how it was because I um, did not do it. And I don't regret not doing it because you gotta know your limits. Whenever we were getting ready to go, the tour guide told us that it would take about four hours to get to the top of Angel's Landing. We did it in about two, two and a half, and that's because we didn't do Angel's Landing. So that half mile, one mile area of the very steep part takes a very, very long time. So keep that in mind. You could get up there, you could knock it out, you could come back down. Also, let me tell you, Scout's Landing, totally worth it. I'm sure that Angel's Landing view is gorgeous and beautiful and, and worth all that hard work but scouts landing was just as wonderful it really was and we stopped we made some friends there we ate some snacks like we had a very good time so then in the afternoon what we did is we went to the narrows because we learned that doing the narrows is best in the afternoon the sun comes in through the canyon it's glistening off the water it's warm in the canyon even though the water is 50 degrees i think is what they said uh, so keep that in mind. If you're going to do one in the morning and one in the afternoon like we did, um, do Angel's Landing in the morning and the Narrows in the afternoon. So it takes about two, two and a half hours to get to the fork. Whenever you get to the fork in the Narrows hike, that is what everyone goes there for. That's where it gets really narrow. That's where you get your slot canyon feel. That's where you're going to get your beautiful pictures and, and experience that, what you're looking for there. Uh, so it took us two and a half hours to get there and once we got there we went 30 minutes out into the canyon and we just picked a side and started walking and it was wonderful it was beautiful um, there were lots of people back there again we made some friends we were talking to everybody we all just couldn't believe what we were seeing hiking through the water is a very different experience than hiking on land we saw people that started the hike in crocs i don't recommend that if you have like waterproof hiking boots or water shoes or anything like that, anything with something loose on your foot, that's what you need. You also don't want to do it in like tevas or chacos. People are definitely doing it, but here's why I don't suggest that. Those rocks in that water, you can't see them. I was hitting my foot on everything the entire time. Colin was too. Like you can't really see in that water, so you don't know what you're stepping in. Now you're not going to get bitten by anything and you're not going to do anything crazy like that. But you can stub your toe and if you've ever stubbed a cold toe you know you want to avoid that <laughs> so i would suggest bringing some waterproof hiking boots or renting the gear at zion outfitters we are not advertised by zion outfitters by the way we just really enjoyed our experience there and want to tell you about it so we rented the neoprene socks the hiking water boots we rented the waders which are waterproof overalls and um colin had a lovely experience no water got inside of his clothes at all um, whenever we rented that stuff we were under the impression that it was all waterproof and that we wouldn't get wet the neoprene socks are not waterproof the hiking boots are not waterproof they're just to keep you warm so they will get wet they will get heavy they will weigh you down um, and whenever you put them on you get in the water and your people wet they are there's water in there for sure inside the sock everything so don't be under that misunderstanding like we were because I was like, I am definitely wet in there. I can feel it. Anyway, so know that you will get wet, but it's about the comfort. 
It's to keep you warm, to keep you from going numb. And if you're not used to cold water, which we are not, um, then it's a really good thing to rent. And we actually talked to some people on the trail with them. They're like, this was the best decision we ever made. Like we would not have been able to handle this otherwise. One thing that I will say is that Colin wore shorts and I think that's why he didn't get as wet. I wore leggings under mine, uh, just because that's what I had been wearing for hiking that day. And the bottom of my leggings were soaked. Absolutely soaked. And then they stunk and it was a bad situation. So if you're going to do that, wear shorts. Solve the problem. You won't be wet, you won't be stinky, you won't be uncomfortable. Just go ahead and knock that out, get that over with, wear shorts. Whenever we rented this gear, it costs $50 per person, but we got the waders, the neoprene socks, the wet hiking boots, and then we got a walking stick, which if you get nothing else, bring walking sticks. That thing saved our lives. I actually never fell, which is unheard of for me. Um, and it was because of that stick. I was like planting it in the rocks and then hoisting myself over and it was definitely worth it. If you are going to the Narrows in the morning, for whatever reason you decide to do that in the morning, you can actually rent the gear the day before after 4 p.m. and keep it for that next day and then turn it in later. They have so much a stock of those items that they're not going to run out. You're not going to get there and they're gonna be out. So don't be afraid of that. Just plan how you wanna plan your trip, plan according to that, but um, don't worry about them running out of those items because they have tons. All right, so you made it to the end of all of these tips. I hope that this gives you the best trip ever. And I would say, whatever you do, definitely go visit Zion National Park. If you're on the fence, if you're if you're wondering, should I even go? Yes, you definitely should go. You're not gonna see anything like it in the rest of Utah, in the rest of the United States, in the rest of the world. Like, it is absolutely one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen. I do not regret going there at all. Even if you're just driving through the park and pulling off at those pull-offs, it is so worth it and it is so, so pretty. It really puts you in awe of creation and nature and you feel like, where am I? Am I on Mars? Like, what am I looking at? What is this place? Why have I never seen anything like this before? And it's because it's only there. It's only in Zion National Park. It actually put the Grand Canyon to shame, okay? Go to Zion National Park. You're going to love it. You're gonna have a great time with your friends, your family, your partner, anyone that you're going with. You're going to have a great time. You're gonna get the experience of a lifetime. So I guess that's tip number six. Go to Zion National Park, enjoy it, take your time. If you wanna make the most out of your trip there, I think you need at least two or three days, especially if you're planning on going nearby to Bryce Canyon National Park or anything like that. You want a few days that way you can do the hard hikes, you can do the easy hikes, you can drive through, you can get the most out of it. That in itself would be a great vacation all on its own. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. Thank you for sticking through. If you enjoyed this video and if you've made it this far, hit that subscribe button. We have lots of other content coming out that you're really gonna enjoy if you enjoyed this one. Um, we have lots of tips, lots of ideas, lots of things that you can do in this part of the world. We're going on a few other trips this year too. So we're gonna have those videos coming out. You don't wanna miss anything that we're doing because it's exciting and it's fun and you're gonna wanna know for whenever you wanna do something like that. So if you have any tips, or you have an experience in Zion National Park that you wanna tell us about, put it in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Um, we love talking to you guys. We love hearing from all of you. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.